You are stuck because you won't move. I know what you're thinking. You're like, sheepdog, duh. No, <laughs> you don't understand. I grew up in Louisiana. I was born and raised there and I hated it. I hated it. Every day of my life, I hated it. I hated the weather. I hated the surroundings. I hated where I grew up. Um, everywhere that I grew up, I hated it. I just hated being there. And everybody was like, why? Like, everybody around me loved it. And I was like, it's just not for me. You know, like, I'm not happy here. I don't feel at home here. I spent my entire childhood dreaming of living in New York as, an, as a uh, professional, successful actor. And uh, Disney Channel fed into that one. Um, <laughs> but eventually I came, uh, as I grew up, I came to the realization that I don't need to move to New York specifically to be happy. But I always hang on, I always hung on to this idea that I won't be happy here though. People are going to tell you over and over and over again for two reasons that it only takes you to be happy where you are. One reason is that they're too scared to move themselves and so they are trying to keep others around with them because they want to go but they can't make themselves go. And number two, they have found peace where they are and they are comfortable where they are. So they don't see a need to move because they couldn't imagine why would you not be comfortable here. I always encouraged people to go because I hate it where I was and I was like, if you can go, go. Three of my good friends from high school left. They moved uh, up north and they all seem really happy where they are. And I was so jealous of them. Not in like a hateful way. I was happy. I'm happy that my friends got to a place of happiness, literally and figuratively. Um, but I was jealous. I was so jealous. And I was like, God, if only I could do that. Like, I am so ready to get away. Um, and I could have. The entire year that I spent thinking that I could have done it. I just didn't. Because I didn't move some people are going to tell you no matter where you go your internal problems will follow you that is true i'm sorry but they're right if you have depression anxiety trauma whatever you have going on up here it's going to follow you wherever you go in the world because uh it's always going to be here even though you're here or there um sorry to tell you but they're right the honeymoon phase of my move didn't last long it lasted me maybe maybe about a month when I got here, I was going to take up hiking, I was going to go car camping, I was going to get a nice big, uh, like, van, um, I was going to change my life. I was going to be one of those van life blogger, vlogger people. I was going to explore and I was going to try new things and I didn't. Seven months into being here in my new state, I still haven't done any of that. I still have zero in-person friends. I have a few acquaintances that I've made through things that I've pursued here, but no friends, no people that you can call up anytime and people that you can go out with on the weekends. I still don't have that. The reason why is because I haven't moved again. If you see me glancing off, it's because I, I wrote a script for this from the heart. Um, I'm mostly referring to it for notes and talking points because I I'm really bad at just coming up with like on-the-spot stuff, but I'm making my points here. Every thought needs a decision, and every decision needs an action. Because a thought is great, a thought is imagination, and imagination is a gift. It's a gift that, that propels you forward. Um, I always hear people say, like, you know, the Wright brothers imagined they could fly, and then they made the first airplane. Um, Einstein 
imagined, he didn't imagine gravity, it's hard to put it this, that was a bad example I guess, but it, Einstein imagined like, what if I could figure out why the apple fell, right? And so now we have the concept of gravity. And you, let's let's apply this to you. You think, you think, your thought is, I wanna lose weight. Your decision is, I'm gonna get up and run or walk every single morning. I'm gonna start somewhere. Your thought, I'm tired of being broke. Decision, I'm gonna start saving money or working harder or spending less or all three. And then you do it. <laughs> Let's, let's do an easy one so that you can't make an excuse. I'm tired of having a messy room. Clean it. <laughs> you have to decide to pick up one, one? You have to decide to pick up one piece of trash. One piece of trash. If you have a candy wrapper on the floor, pick it up, put it in the trash. Congratulations, you're on your first, you, you're, you did the first step to your journey to a clean room. And then eventually you'll make habits to where you are a clean person. Every single thing starts, every, every great thing, every, every bad thing too, but every great thing starts with a thought and then a decision and that is the birth of an action. And then you take that action and you do another action and you do another action. It gets easier and easier and easier and then you are moving. You are moving. You finally move and you make that shit happen. Up until I was 23 years old, I'm 24 now. I always told myself, I'm too ugly for it, I'm too untalented for it, I'm too broke for it, I'm not in the right place for it, blah, 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 blah. But when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, and I broke it off because it just wasn't going anywhere. It, it's not that I didn't love him anymore. It hurt. It hurt a lot. It was a painful transition, a relationship of three years. And... I loved him so much, but it just wasn't the same anymore, and it wasn't really building into a constructive relationship anymore. I just decided, I'm like, hey, you know, I, I can't live like this anymore. And I felt guilty because I was keeping him from his best self or his next correct partner or what have you, and I was like, I, I gotta move. And I prayed, hang on, my lamp was bothering me, so it wasn't straight. Um, I prayed so hard every single day for like, I think like a month or two, just in my prayer closet. And I was like, God, what do I do? Like, I love this person so much and I'm so scared to move. And then God told me to move. Eventually one day I just had the feeling that God was telling me like, okay, it's time to move, break the news to him. So I did it as gently as I could and we split ways. And uh, that's where my, I guess where I, I could say my real story began. I moved in with my grandparents um, for two months, I believe. I moved in at the beginning of January and I think I was unemployed for a month. I, I had been unemployed before, I believe. That, that part of my life is really blurry, that transitionary period between my ex and my grandparents' house. I, for some reason, I just can't really remember what happened. But um, I, I know I didn't have any money. <laughs> I was broke, um, I didn't have a job, and it's, it, back where I'm from, it is so hard to find work, like, there's no jobs whatsoever, um, and then when I moved into my grandparents' house, I had been in and out of the house every single day, trying to find a job so I could start making money again and get back on my feet by myself, and, uh, my dad notified me about a job working alongside the railroad, um, it was the only job that would pay any decent wage that I liked to do that I was good at, um, within 30 miles of my grandparents' house. So, I went, I applied, I have a CDL, so they hired me like basically on the spot, um, and essentially, I worked, I worked my ass off. Um, it was an on-call job, 24-7. Um, you were supposed to get one day off, I didn't. <laughs> I worked pretty much six, six days straight, seven days straight, most of the time, unless they just didn't need me, which was kind of rare, they were very busy. Um, but if I got a call at two in the morning and I was soft and cozy in my bed, I went, um, I didn't want to. I did not want to. There's so many times. I am not a night person. I don't like staying up overnight. I don't like staying up late. Um, but I got up, I got up at two in the morning and I would go in the freezing rain and the hot, muggy disgustingness. I would just go. And I did that for about a month or two and I saved up about $2,000. I worked so hard. I worked so hard and I saved up every penny I could until I was able to move. And finally, it just 
happen. I decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to jump. And I moved. And here I am. <laughs> um, I worked for the same company a little while here. And then I moved on to concrete mixer truck driving. Um, I made a lot of money. I made, a, I made the most money I've ever seen in my life at that company. I met awesome people. Um, <laughs> I met some really great people there and they, they did change my life in very small ways, but they, they themselves, they changed my life. Um, and I just got really upset too easily. Like I, I, the job was stressing me out. Um, I, I didn't feel like I could perform well anymore. My health was just whew, because I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping well. I started drinking more. Um, started consuming nicotine. I didn't smoke because I like I can't tolerate cigarettes. But I started vaping. Like I just trying to get some kind of fix to like happy myself, happy, happy. Like try to be happy. And I'm just like ah, this is not working. I'm I'm just destroying myself. Um, so I moved on. And I'm starting a new job soon. But uh, yeah, I got a little off track there. But uh, that is relevant to my story because it, it it's on the theme. I moved. I, I jumped and I moved and I tried new things. And now I am where I am now because I moved. Am I still depressed sometimes? Yeah, I have anxiety and depression. It's gonna come. It's gonna pop its ugly head in every now and again and show back up. I can't really help that. Um because I don't take medication, and I refuse to, um, because I've taken it before, and it just, it's not my, it doesn't work for me. Um, I am trying to pursue therapy. I gotta get my finances straight before I'm willing to commit to that, um, but I do want it. Um, but when you move, uh, states, homes, places in general, when you move, sorry, I just realized I'm fidgeting a lot, um, when you move, Every internal problem will follow you. That is stuff that you have to deal with on your own. And that's okay. That takes time. You shouldn't feel guilty because like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe you moved to Los Angeles like you've always wanted to. You got that nice apartment. You got um, the coffee shop on the corner and friends and this and that. And like your life just did a 180 and you're just like, oh my God, I, this is everything I ever dreamed of, but I'm still sad. That's okay. Do not feel guilty for that. A move is a traumatic experience. I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that like psychologists say that like even if you're happy about it, like a move is a traumatic experience. Like it takes time to get over with, um, get over get over it. Um and you can have everything you've ever wanted served to you on a silver platter, and if you're still dealing with stuff inside that you didn't fix before you got there, that's fine. You don't have to feel guilty about it because I think that's a really big problem. We always think that everything on the exterior is going to change the inside, and it is not. You have to work. Uh, if you believe in God, you got to pray. you got to have a relationship with God. Um, if you have mental issues, you have to work through those mental issues. If you have trauma, if you have uh, anxiety attacks, you have to fix that by itself. Those are separate issues, and that's okay. That doesn't make you any, any less of a person. It doesn't make you a bad person because you finally got what you wanted on the outside and your inside isn't fully happy with it. That's fine. It'll come, but you have to work on it. But, um... Yeah, I just think you should be grateful for the changes that have happened on the outside, especially if you made it happen. Be grateful to yourself because you're like, wow, I disciplined myself enough to get here. So to finish on that note, um, I gave you my advice on how to change your life and how that worked for me and how to feel better when you feel stuck. You have to move. Um, but before I close out this video, I wanted to give you a piece of advice from someone who really just honestly inspires me. Every time I listen to his sermons or his speeches, I'm just, I just feel renewed. I feel, I feel so, um, empowered and I just feel so motivated. And that's Steve Harvey. I know, I know, but like, look, I'm a Christian. Steve Harvey is a Christian. He's got really good words. Like even even outside of his Christian worldview, he's he's a I think he's got a very intelligent worldview and he made it work. So I can too. <laughs> but essentially Steve Harvey says, bow your head, humble yourself before God, pray for it, ask for it. You you have not because you ask not, and that is so true. God has worked so hard in my life. Um 
he's been so faithful. Like, he really has. And if you don't believe in God, you can click away, you can stay, whatever. I'm not trying to convince you of it, but, like, I'm just giving my testimony and it is relevant. It is relevant to my story because I am a Christian. I always have been. And I put a lot of faith in God to get me where I am. Um, I didn't just rely on myself. I put a lot of faith in God to get here. But Steve Harvey says that you put your head down, you humble yourself, and you pray before God, and you ask for it. And I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. Every time I listen to his, there's one specific sermon. It plays over and over again on YouTube. Like, I guess a lot of people have re-uploaded it, and it always, it'll just play over and over again. But like, so I hear it a lot. But I, I love that sermon. It, it just does something to me every time. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Like, stop, stop pitying yourself. Just get up and do it. Like, <laughs> another principle that I have put into work uh, that Steve and many other people say to do is to write down your goals. That is a staple in progression in my life. I've noticed um, before I broke up with my ex, I would write it in my prayer journal. I would write my goals down on pieces of paper and I wouldn't even sit there just to visualize it. Just writing it down helped me so much. Um, now I use to-do lists every single day of my life. I use to-do list. Um, they, they've changed the game. They truly have. And like Steve said, it, there's a line in that one speech where he goes, I don't know what it is about writing it down, but it works. Something, it, it, it triggers something in the unseen world to just get rolling, to get you rolling towards that goal. And I absolutely believe that because it has worked for me. And the last piece of advice that I have for you, if this, this hit me hard. I heard it a few days ago. If you don't get up and do it, someone else will. My entire life, I've wanted to be an actress. I gave up on that dream because I thought I'd just never be good enough for it. But as of November 2021, I decided I'm going to full-time pursue voiceover and acting uh, because that's what I'm made to do. Like, I don't want to do anything else. And I was like, I'm tired. I'm so tired of doing things I don't want to do. Going to a job I don't want to do every single day. I'm like, I want to make money off of acting. I want to make money off of my art. I want, I want to subsist completely off of the creative essence. I just want to be an artist. Like, and so I was like, you know what? I'm going to dedicate myself to that. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to work. I'm going to connect with people. I'm going to pursue it like like a hungry lion. I'm like, I'm going to chase it, you know? <laughs> like, um, and if I never would have made that decision, I wouldn't even be where I am now. And so many good things have happened for my career in just like a few weeks. It's freaking ridiculous. Like, it truly is about just moving. If you don't sit down and write the first word to that novel that's been sitting in your head for months, someone else will write the next best-selling novel and no one will even know that you are a writer. If you want to be the star of the next Avengers movie, I know that's kind of a big shot, but like, <laughs> like just, just for example purposes, if you want to be the next star of, of the next original movie, the next blockbuster film that nobody knows about yet, that director is never going to cast you, the casting director, he's never going to cast you if you don't audition. You have to audition. If you don't put your face in front of his face, he's never going to know that your face exists. If you're an athlete and you want to win that race, but you don't get up and start cardio training and, and eating right, and, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't time yourself, if you don't practice your running, how are you going to win the race? If you, and there's no one like you, if you don't do it, somebody else will. From the Christian worldview, they put it this way as well. If you don't get up and do what God has made you for, because he's got great plans for you, there's a reason he put it in your heart. If you don't get up, move, and trust God to bring you where he made you to go, he's going to bring another person that he also made with that potential to go there. And you're going to be mad at God because you'll be like, why not? Why not? Because you didn't trust him and you didn't move. And why wouldn't you move if you trust him? When are you gonna get sick and tired of being sick and tired and just move.